Well, welcome everybody. Uh, let's start this talk about the AMBCR package. Uh, this is the this package is the result of a long period of working on movement trajectory analysis, especially on behavioral annotation of movement trajectory analysis. And this uh, uh, a work done in collaboration with Frederic Bartomeu, who's also here with us, and also with John Palmer and Aitana Oltra, who are on the lab. Frederic is the head of the lab. And, okay, this algorithm, uh, as we, well, uh, this is, uh, as I said, an algorithm for behavioral annotation of movement trajectories, although as, oh, it doesn't work. Okay, uh, so uh, the algorithm was originally developed to, for the behavioral annotation of movement trajectories, although very soon when we, as the creature was growing up, we realized that uh, it could be a, an algorithm with a much broader uh, applicability to many other domains, many other kinds of data sets. But uh, for this tutorial, let's go to our original problem which is that, well, we all know, um, given a, given a trajectory, have the, the locations, the succession of locations in time, uh, we would like to have some automatic methodology that gives us something like this that is some kind of magic tool that assigns uh, a label to each location identifying the behavior or the behavioral mode that the animal is supposed to be having at that location so that we can easily identify uh, foraging areas, um, resting sites, pathways, uh, stopovers, uh, and so on. So that the, the common approach to this problem is to estimate some movement variables, for instance, uh, velocity or turning angle, torquosity, first passage time, and apply some classification algorithm. But this presents, uh, for this particular problem, very, well, not trivial challenges. First of all, in the most of the cases, this is an unsupervised problem. That means that we have no objective way to, no objective means to validate or to assess the performance of uh, the methodologies that we use. Uh, second challenge is that uh, many of these methodologies, these existing methodologies that we could apply to solve this, uh, require some uh, parameterization or some uh, setting some initial conditions, which uh, of course means that we must make some prior assumptions about our data. And in most of the cases, uh, we really don't know, we, we, we don't have the right knowledge to, uh, to make these prior assumptions. And of course, these prior assumptions will bias the output of any one of these methodologies. Now the challenge is that uh, trajectory data is inherently associated to a certain degree of uh, uncertainty because of uh, spatial errors of the tracking devices or because of sampling heter heterogeneities in, the, um, in, in our trajectory. And this should be taken into, into account in some way. And so 
the, the, the great challenge, which still remains, is to devise some general methodology or some kind of methodology that is general enough to be applied to different species, uh, different tracking technologies, and that is also able to capture sufficiently general and biologically meaningful semantics. That means that, the out, that we can interpret the output really in terms of, well, in biological or ecological terms. So here we are trying to fill this gap with the AMBC algorithm. EMBC is, uh, well, stands for Expectation Maximization Binary Clustering. This is a variant of the Gaussian mixture model maximum likelihood estimation algorithm, also known as expectation maximization clustering. And this is a very well known tool for identifying clusters, clusterings, you know, clusters in a multivariate data set. It is widely known and widely used because it is based on uh, the assumption that the clusters can be described, can be explained. Uh, in terms of Gaussians, which is um, an assumption that easily applies in uh, many cases. Mm? And then the expectation maximization is an iterative process that allows to estimate maximum likelihood values for any model, in our case, for, for the Gaussians that we are looking for. Especially in our case, the expectation maximization clustering presents some uh, good advantages. The first of all, it is a multivariate clustering algorithm. What means that we can deal not only with the values of the variables, but also with the correlations in them. And in, some, in many cases, there is um, the the more, most useful information is in the correlations of the variables. And for this, it is very important to work with multivariate algorithms. And second advantage is that this algorithm is unsupervised. And as our problem is an unsupervised problem, it fits perfectly to our needs. Uh, well, it is an unsupervised because uh, in the most of the cases, uh, it is really costly to have labeled that data. Hmm? We, uh, in, in most of the cases, almost impossible because we can do it only by visual observation or, uh, or uh, by manually annotating uh, our data, which is, what is uh, very time consuming. So um, it's a good approach for, for our case. Well, that being said, this algorithm also presents uh, some drawbacks. There is nothing perfect. <laughs> and uh, as all other, all other methodologies, this algorithm requires uh, some prior assumptions, which in this case are in the form of that we need to, to set to, to set a starting point for the initial uh, iterative process that will estimate the parameters of, of our model. And in most of the cases, we have no idea of what is the, um, the good starting point for, for, for this process. And the output will certainly be very highly dependent on this starting point. So we have to be care with, uh, very careful with this. And another drawback, another important drawback of this algorithm is that because of its unsupervised nature, <laughs> the output that comes out is sometimes not easy to interpret in terms of the variables that we have used as input variables. Let me show you, for instance, This is a, 
uh, data set, uh, set of data points, a, a, a binary case. Mm -hmm. uh, it corresponds to the velocities and turns calculated for a real trajectory. Mm -hmm. And if we apply a typical implementation of the AMBC algorithm, Uh, but true. Sorry. What we get is this. This is a robust and statistically significant clustering of this data set of points. But if we if we are meaning to in interpret it in terms of uh, speed and turn and associate some semantics that really um, uh, explains why the blues are different from the cyan cluster, for instance. Mm. This is not easy in many cases. Mm. So uh, what are the novelties that the expectation maximization binary clustering presents? Well, first of all, uh, it allows us to implement the potential uncertainty that is in our data. What I, I, I didn't mention, but is something that is not possible in the typical implementations of the expectation maximization clustering algorithm. There are some specific implementations in which it's possible. I mean, this is not our idea. It was presented previously. But it, it is not present in the typical implementations of the expectation maximization clustering. And this uncertainty is implemented so that, uh, well, in the form of weights that leverage in the computation of the uh, parameters of our model. So that uh, those points that are more reliable, those data points that are more reliable, uh, make a uh, strong influence in the computation of the centroids of the Gaussians. And those that are more uncertain uh, that don't influence uh, so much. Okay. And then another important novelty in the AMBC algorithm is that uh, the algorithm splits the, the input space in binary regions in which and it, such that in each region, each variable can take either high or low values. Okay. In, in order for you to understand this, well, and then uh, clusters are forced to fit into these binary regions. And so they also will correspond to values of the variables that are either high or low. Okay, and I can show you this. This is the result of the AMBC clustering with the same data set, the same data points. And in this case, it is intuitive to see that we have split the input space into highs and lows values for each variable and we can observe for instance the orange cluster corresponding to low values of velocity and low values of turn that can be associated to uh, resting behavior and we can see the red cluster corresponding to low values of speed and high values of turn or a wider range values of turn that can be easily associated to a foraging behavior then we have the blue cluster with high values of speed, high values of velocity, and low values of turn that can be easily associated to a relocation behavior. And then we have the CN cluster, which are more complex semantics, but with high values of uh, velocity and high values of turn that in general can be associated to um, extensive search behavior. That's what we are looking for. 
we look for a partition of the input space in which each cluster can be identified in terms of the these binary values of the of the variables. The highest I was going to that point right now. <laughs> of course, this is the next point. Uh, because we are doing this binary partition of the input space, the number of clusters is automatically given by the number of variables that we use. So it's two to the number of the number of variables. But this uh, should not be seen as a drawback. But as something uh, coherent with our main motivation, the main motivation in this algorithm, which is the interpretability of the results. So the MBC is intended to be used with not many variables, just only two, three, four, five, six at the most. Six, at the, six variables would mean two to the six clusters, which is 64, which is far beyond the number of uh, uh, behaviors that one may expect to find in a trajectory in any uh, appli biological application. And also uh, far beyond the, 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 the number of clusters that uh, one can, uh, a human mind can easily distinguish and uh, interpret. So. It is not a question of using a lot of input information, but of choosing, we have to think previously which are the best variables that we have to use that can, uh, that can convey the right information to decode the set of behaviors we are looking for. And just use these variables. So not use many variables, but just use the right variables that will allow us to identify the behaviors we're looking for. And this is only uh, two to the number of variables is only an app bound to the number of final clusters that we will get. Because um, in the optimization process, some of them can merge. And so uh, at the end, we, we can end up with some less. Uh, okay, maybe we start with four variables and we have an, an upper bound of 16 clusters. And at the end, we get only eight. In this sense, um, this, this would be good because that means that uh, mm, these clusters are, are more, more powerful and uh, describe really something that is mm, there mm, described by the, the data. Okay? Then, uh, another point is that the EMBC sets the initial conditions uh, automatically um, and sets uh, the starting point so that uh, it, does, it, it starts from the most uninformative situation in order to uh, avoid any kind of bias in the iterative process okay, and in the output. Uh, this, uh, this starting point is uh, to assign an equal probability to each data point to belong to any other, or any of the clusters, any, and also an equal probability to any cluster of being there, of existing. You know? so, uh, so what we call a uniform prior uh, marginal distribution of the clusters. With all this, the algorithm stands uh, parameter free. And so it is very easy to use for the user who only has to give, put his data, choose the right variables, that's what, we, what uh, the user has to do. But, but from this point on, everything works uh, by itself. And uh, so, how is this algorithm implemented in the package? Uh, well, I will, in order to explain this and to explain uh, the, the package, 
I will briefly go through um, the APA of the package. The APA is the application programming interface you know, and, is the, and describes the, the, the set of elements and the set of rules that we have to know to communicate with the package. Hmm? Sorry. Uh, good question. <laughs> uh, if it is a, if 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 we have a, a trimodal distribution, one of our, our variables, two things can happen <laughs> because we are forcing highs and lows. So, if we have a strong correlation with the second variable, we can end up having uh, these three uh, clusters. Uh, although uh, corresponding to a different value for the other variable. The algorithm will split this, okay? If there is not enough correlation with any other of the variables, if, if you think that you use, um, in case we are using a, a, a trimodal variable and then a second variable which has no correlation at all, then we would get a partition somewhere in between so that the final clusters are uh, optimally likelihood, optimal, right? So we were talking about the APA. <coughs> the APA is this set of elements and the set of rules that we have to know. In other words, it's like the the, <coughs> uh, the, the set of syntactical elements, you know, subjects, verbs, complements that we have to know and we have to know how to combine them to ask the package to do things, no? to do what we want. The subjects are the, class, the classes. Classes are objects, and objects are containers of information that is organized in attributes that in R are called slots. Hmm? And each one of these slots contain a piece of information regarding to the object. Okay. For instance, uh, an object uh, could be could define the, the object person, no? and then we have attributes, name, age, gender, so on. Okay. Then we have constructors. Constructors are verbs, verbs that allow us to say to the package that we want to build one of these class, one, the, uh, one of these objects. Okay. We pass some input information to the to the constructor. Constructor processes it. Uh, computes, makes some computation, eventually computes some output, and packages all this information in the object, stores it there. Okay? And now we have methods. Methods are also verbs that allow us to manipulate the objects. Once we have built them, then of course we are interested in know mm, the output or what is in there. No? Uh, we want to have access to the attributes, for instance, or we want to visualize the output or whatever. Okay, and then we have parameters. The parameters are the complements in these sentences <coughs> that allow to modify, well, modify us to the commands that uh, can make the, uh, well, modify the behavior of constructors of met or methods, the, the, the default behavior. Well, we have parameters that allow us to modify the default behavior of the, of the constructors and methods. Ah, okay. So, the classes. Classe, classes are normally organized in a hierarchical structure, what means that if we can define a class, we define the attributes of the class, we, the f we, we, we define the functionality of this class, and afterwards we can define a, a subclass of this class and this subclass inherits all attributes and all functionality that we have defined for the, f the parent class. Okay? This is very useful for programmers but also for users because then uh, the same command that we have defined for uh, to do something with a class works for any subclass of it. Okay, so this is object uh, programming, uh, and and this package is uh, it's not uh, is, is done in this way. Okay, so our main class in this package is the bin class. This class uh, uh, 
is construct from from well this this class implements the the main uh, algorithm the main AMBC algorithm main AMBC function so that we can pass a matrix with our data set points matrix with n rows n variables and then the <coughs> Constructor will run the, uh, the binary clustering, and will and will create an object of class bin class. Okay, then we have subclass of this one, but the first one is generic in the sense that we can build a matrix with uh, any variables we decide. We pass it to it, and we will get the binary clustering of this set of uh, uh, of a set of points. Okay. We have a more specific class to work with trajectories that simplifies, greatly simplifies our work. And it, this is the bin class path. The input to this, to this class is directly a path, a, a trajectory. If we have a file with our trajectory, we pass this file to the constructor of this object, and the constructor will uh, project the trajectory will compute the movement variables, will construct the data matrix, will apply the AMBC, and we will get the binary clustering automatically from the path. Okay? Then we have the uh, subclass of this one, which, that is bin class move, that uh, is also a subclass of move objects from the move R package of, uh, that we have been talking a lot uh, in this tutorial this morning. Okay? This class uh, is specific to work directly with move objects. If any of you, well, I've seen that uh, mo most of you have trajectories in the, in the move, bank, move bank, so you are used to work with move objects. You can use this move object you can pass it to this constructor, and the, const the constructor will do the work, will do all the work, and will give you the binary clustering of this, um, of this, the trajectory associated to this move object. And the final object you get, the bin class move, as it is a subclass of a move object, inherits all functionality of the move object. So you can keep working with the move, or with the, with the bin class move object. In the same way you were working with the move object. All functionality applies to the bin class move. But with the uh, added feature that you have the, the trajectory uh, segmented, or labeled, behaviorally annotated. And then each one of these classes have uh, still a subclass, which is being class path stack or being class move stack, that are ready to work with a set of trajectories or a set of move objects, and then we can make analyzes at uh, population level. Okay. The constructors. We have, at this moment, we only have two constructors in the package. We hope to have more in future versions. We have a general constructor, which is the EMBC, which will return us, uh, well, this, the, uh, the signature of this constructor. Signature in R just specifies the class of the object that is expected to be used as input to this constructor. Okay, so the AMBC has a signature, a data matrix, and we we put a data matrix. We give them, uh, we give it a data matrix, and the AMBC constructor will return us this um, bin class object with the binary clustering in it. Okay, and then we and the, so this one has a broad applicability because we can pass any matrix that we like to it. And then again, we have a specific constructor 
for movement trajectory analysis, uh, and in particular for behavioral annotation based on speed and turn in this uh, version of the package. That means that, well, th this constructor is the STBC, hmm? that stands for speed turn binary clustering. And we, we pass to it uh, either a path or a move object, and it will do the binary clustering and will return us a, a, a bin class path or a bin class move object. Hmm? So this is the AMBC constructor. As I told you, the signature is a matrix, data, po data points matrix with n data points and variables. It will return us a bin class object. And uh, it is as simple as this. I have here an, an object. Uh, this x, x to d is a, 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 a synthetic object that I have generated for this tutorial. And it has this slot D in which it has um, uh, a matrix, a, a two-dimensional matrix. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can see uh, this is the data set of points. These points mm, uh, do not mean nothing. They are just values. Okay. And uh, I have used uh, I have used a mixture of all Gaussians to generate them that you can see here the big uh, shown in colors. Okay. So I, I have sampled from a, a Gaussian of a, a mixture of four Gaussians this set of points. Okay. So this is our matrix. It could be uh, anything else, whatever. We and if we want to have the binary, binary clustering of this, we just have to give a name to the object in which we uh, well give a name to the object that will be returned by the constructor. Okay, let's say uh, my binary clustering. Okay, my VC. Specifier constructor and the matrix. The constructor processes matrix, starts the iterative process, and and gives at each step it gives this output in which we can see the the number of the iteration, the likelihood of the partition of that iteration in this second column. The third column uh, gives us the number of clusters that are still in our partition. Hmm? Some of them could be merged and then we would see that the number of clusters decreases. And the last column uh, is saying to us the number of points that at each step are changing from one cluster to the other because the um, this method tries to adjust, okay, and recomputes the Gaussian distribution at each step, assigns each data point to the cluster that is um, assigning a higher probability to, to belong to it. Mm -hmm. And so at each step, uh, each data point is uh, uh, assigned to a cluster. And this is what we see. Here, how many of them are changing from one cluster to the other at each step? So, what are the parameters that you are using for producing these clusters? Because you mentioned use velocity or time change, but here are this set of No, yeah, but, but, but this is by, for clustering um, uh, a, a trajectory. 
I'm using now the general constructor. And I, I have used a matrix of data points that is synthetically generated from these four Gaussians. And it, it has no physical meaning. Of, it's just a synthetic data set. Well, it's just X and I. They don't mean anything. It's uh, it's not a real case. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, well, and we can see that the process, uh, uh, the likelihood, keeps increasing along the iterative process until it reaches uh, a local optima in in the likelihood space. And there, the clustering is stable, and then the process stops itself. Okay. Well, the other constructor works exactly the same way. So in this case, we'll have a meaning. We have the STBC. In this case, the signature, the input, expected input, is a data frame with our trajectory. This is the a requirement, of course. The input is a data frame with a particular format. That means that it, this data frame can have a number of columns that will, it doesn't matter, the number of columns. But the three, col the three first columns have to, uh, well, need to have timestamps with a POS6 CD format. Well, this is specified in the package, in the documentation. Okay? And then, the, the second and the uh, third column, longitudes and latitudes. Okay? This is the only requirement. Hmm? Well, we have this data frame, and we pass it to the STBC constructor. Uh, I show you an example. Here I have <coughs> this data frame. Well, better, let me use another one. <laughs> the example path that we have in the package. Okay. The data frame with these columns, daytime, long, longitude, latitude. And this example path is also synthetically generated mm, so that we know a, li a label for each data point. We know how it, this point has been generated to each cluster be belongs. So we can use it for, uh, we, we, we can, it, it is important to see that this, this, this column, whenever we have mm, this uh, mm, expert labeling of our data points, we can use it, we can put it there, and we will see that we can use it with um, all the methods that uh, we have in the package. So if I use this data frame, <coughs> I give again a name to the object. In this case, I call it my binary clustering path, uh, my, my BCP, okay? And well, we have the same output again. Uh, the process iterates until it reaches a stable clustering, and okay, we have our object. And still a new example. I have here a, an object, a move, that you can see that is a move object from the from the, um, the R package. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of uh, slots here. That names Earth move. Hmm. Among them, we have uh, coordinate uh, timestamps of this. So we can pass this object to the constructor. The constructor will uh, will will take will take the trajectory from this and uh, will project it and uh, will do the binary clustering. Okay. And it's as simple, again, as giving a name. In this case, my binary clustering move, my VCM, OK? STVC, 
move, and it works exactly the same. Well, this takes a little bit longer, but here we are. Here it is. So, uh, what do we have so far? Well, we have um, generated these three objects, MyVC, MyVCM, and MyVCP, my uh, in which we have the three cases, the examples that we have used, binary clustered, okay? And what is inside of these objects? Hmm? Let's have a look at these slots. It is good to know what we have in our objects because uh, probably uh, there, there, there will be information, there will be information that can be useful for some ad hoc uh, uh, analysis that we want to do. And we can make use of these, inf uh, these values. Well, we have slot X, well, in my BC. This is the data, the input data matrix. Or in case of uh, uh, being class path object, well, is also the data matrix, but in this case, we have the velocities and turns computed from the trajectory here. So is, X is the matrix of, uh, with our set of data points. Mm -hmm. Then we have some um, uh, slots like N, the number of uh, uh, examples we have, number of observations, M, the number of variables, K, the number of clusters, so, uh, the upper bound, the number of clusters, okay? Then we have Mm. W. This is a matrix with the likelihood weights of each data point. The likelihood weights are the probabilities of each data point of belonging to each cluster. Each data point is assigned to the cluster that uh, assigns to it the highest probability, but of course has a not null probability of belonging to the other clusters. And we have this information here, and as we will see, this information can be useful for some uh, meta-analysis, some further analysis that we would like to do upon this binary clustering, okay? Then we have vector A. This is a vector with the assignments of each data point to a cluster uh, that gives uh, highest uh, likelihood, okay? Then we have R. R is a matrix containing the values, what we call the delimiters. The delimiters are the values that split our input space for each variable into high and low values, okay? And we have these values here and we can know at which point a particular variable is split into high and low values for high and low values of the rest of the variables. So don't think of, of these values as something associated to, as one value associated to one variable. Now, for instance, we can have here, why do we have so many values? Well, we have the splitting value of velocity for low values of turns, for instance, and the splitting value of velocity for high values of turns. That is a little bit complicated to get the first time, but, but you will, you, will, you will get it. And then uh, we have uh, this vector L in which we have the likelihood values that we have had at each step of the iterative process. And this is good because when we have a long uh, uh, process, uh, a long, um, we have a slow convergence in our data points, uh, maybe we don't want to be there looking at each step, uh, uh, whether it is converging or, or not. It always converge. But this is, um, this is good to see whether convergence uh, was uh, good enough or not. Well, 
you can see how the likelihood increases until it uh, reaches a stable point. Mm -hmm. Okay, then the being class path object as a subclass of the being class object inherits all these slots that we have seen mm -hmm. and also has some specific slots that are particular for, 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 that, for the case of a trajectory. Mm -hmm. We have a uh, slot ETH that stands for path, no? My BCP mm, path. Well. This is the input data frame. Okay? It is stored there in the object also. Okay? And then we have some vectors, the span with the the time intervals between successive locations, because we have had to do some uh, intermediate computations in order to compute speeds and turns, and then do the binary clustering. So we have this vector span in which we have the time intervals between each successive location, the slot dist in which you have the distances among uh, well between successive locations, and we have slot bare in which we have the the heading directions at each location that is used then to compute turns. Well, all this is stored in these slots. And then we have U. U is a matrix of uncertainty. This uncertainty, for instance, for our synthetic uh, object, <coughs> has no sense. And <coughs> the, although we can specify it as a, as a parameter to the, the constructor of the bin object, uh, the being class object. Uh, by default, the, construct, the constructor um, considers that there is no uncertainty upon the variable, so it sets it to one. In the case of a trajectory, this uncertainty is computed considering that um, the, the farther uh, two locations are one from the other in time, the less reliable is the estimation of speed that we are doing between these two points. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uncertainty is also applied to the computation of turns. Okay? And this is automatically computed by the, um, by the constructor in order to, because this is necessary before doing the clustering. And uh, well, because this is synthetic, <laughs> there is no uncertainty here. Well, we can make a real example with um, the trajectory I, I showed you before. This is from a, a, a migration trajectory of an osprey. And we can do the. Uh, clustering of this trajectory. In, in this case, at, is it a path? We will use the STBC constructor, OK? Here we have our clustering. And um, well, and if we have a look, no, sorry, the Osprey PCP. The uncertainty matrix, uh, oh, it's not easy to see, but do you see, for instance, the, this value? Mm. We have values of 1. Um, the way the, the uncertainty is computed is that we consider a baseline of certainty for our measures that corresponds to the time interval that is m most frequent in our trajectory. This is our baseline of certainty for that trajectory, OK? And these are all these ones. No? And any uh, two points, any time interval that is uh, higher than this uh, time interval will be assigned um, an uncertainty less than one, OK? 
Uncertainties must be between zero and one, are weights, uh, as weights, okay? Well, and being class move, as being a subclass of the being class path and of the move object inherits all slots of functionality from both classes, okay? So, mm, uh, now let's see the methods. Methods, we have built our objects. We have made our binary castings. Now what can we do with them? Hmm? Uh, well, we have several kind of methods. We have several methods. Methods for uh, showing us statistical information about the clustering. We have methods for plotting the variables that have been computed along the iterative process. Hmm? And uh, also we have methods for visualizing either the clustering that we have made or the path, the annotated path, in which we are assigning these levels to each location. Hmm? And we also have methods to compare different clusters that we can make uh, with different um, uh, parameters or, uh, well, you always see. That that's in some cases, it is interesting to compare clustering, so between different individuals of the same species, I, I don't know. Hmm? So first method, STTS, this stands for statistics and gives us statistical information about the clustering. It's a very simple method, signature is any one of the objects that we have described, has no parameters and we just have to say, well I want to see the statistics of my clustering Then I see for each cluster, I have a row for each cluster, low, 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 high, high, low, high, high. Mm? And we have uh, the mean and the variance for the first variable, the mean and the variance for the second variable, and then in the, the other columns we have the number of points in each cluster, so in our final clustering, mm? and the um, marginal distribution, the, the proportion with respect to the total number of points. Mm? The functionality works the same for any one of, uh, of our objects. You can see, for instance, in this case, that for low values of speed, uh, either here or here, we have means that are significantly lower than for high values of speed. We can check visually here, uh, or numerically, we can check the sig how different are our clusters in terms of uh, the, um, the variables that we have used as input. Mm -hmm. Then we have the SCTR method. This stands for scatter. And this method makes a scatter plot of our clustering. Mm -hmm. As we, well, as long as we are using a bivariate. Uh, well, I didn't mention this, but in this current version, Uh, well, we, we, the package is only ready to work with by, uh, uh, for a bivariate case, okay? And um, this is uh, also very simple to see, and we finally will see how our clustering looks like. No? Uh, uh, sorry. Let's look at the clustering of the Osprey trajectory. So what we have is this. And we can see a cluster of low values of velocity and low values of turn. Uh, we have a cluster uh, resting, uh, corresponding to resting sites. Uh, well, as I told you before, okay? And the black lines are the values of the delimiters that split the input space, okay? And uh, then we have, well, I have to rush a little bit because we're late. Uh, level P shows us the leveling profile. Uh, as it is expected to have uh, to, 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 as we are 
it is expected to have um, to, to exist a, a correlation in time with the levels that we are uh, that, that the, the, the levels to the locations. You know, we can check this here. You know? And we have in the bottom plot the labels for the whole trajectory together with the values of the speed and well the, the input uh, variables uh, to check that there is some there is uh, well the, that they correspond one to each other okay and uh, there are some more methods that I cannot uh, explain because I'm well late but I would like to show you the fi uh, final uh, uh, segmented trajectory we have a method which is pkml or bkml which is for visualizing directly visualizing the segmented trajectory so it generates a kml doc that can be visualized with google earth hmm? so we have our object hmm? and uh, then we can uh, ask the package to give us a, a KML doc of this um, trajectory. This method has a parameter that is display. By default, it's set uh, to false. So that means that the, the method will only generate the KML doc and will save it in a specific folder that is specified by default, but you can also change with the parameter, OK? But you can also specify display true and seems that we have some graphic problems. This is because of the connection with it. What we have is our segmented trajectory here. And we can mm, easily identify here mm, different uh, periods in the migration, in this migration trajectory. Hmm? For instance, we have this final uh, period in which the, the animal is uh, directly relocating to its uh, destination hmm? and has some uh, stops here, here, and some, uh, and, and during the day, and so we can see here that it, it, it was resting here for a while. <coughs> but at 9 a.m. it departs from this location and keeps flying uh, all the day till it reaches here, let's say at uh, the last point flying. Uh, I'm too slow. This one till. 4, 5 o'clock p.m. Hmm? Then stops, rests all night, departs again at 9 a.m. Still keeps flying all day and, and then stops here. Well, and so on. We have a very regular pattern that is clearly identified by the algorithm. We also can observe the foraging area here. in the middle of Europe that can be easily identified with many points uh, in, in these locations. Many points here. Well, uh, so that uh, uh, foraging areas and resting sites and uh, relocation paths can be easily identified. And I can show you another example, for instance, in order to get to uh, I have another object here, another trajectory. Okay, I show the last example. Uh, well, this is another trajectory. Mm -hmm. 
Mm, well, makes, let's make another one. Let this be. This is the foraging trajectory of a bat, of a bat. Hmm. One that I, I was showing you at the beginning. And uh, we can also identify easily uh, roosting sites, foraging sites, and clear relocations to, to other sites. And I would like to show you many more, but we are out of time. <laughs> so we have to stop it here. Is there any, and questions? any questions? Okay, thank you. I, I didn't say it, but uh, uh, the, the, we have a beta portion of the package that uh, is ready to be used so that anyone that of you that uh, would like to use it and uh, use it with your own data, uh, please ask it. And well, I think there is a Dropbox where we have to. But anyway, if you want to ask me, I, I, I can give it to you. Uh, sorry? Uh, only uh, synthetic examples because we cannot. You are asking for documentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, documentation. Uh, well, this is the issue in the package. This is the reason, the, the main reason why it is already not uploaded to the, the Prime Mirror. Anyway, there is there a simple documentation, but and I, and I can also give you the the, the, the this tutorial, the, the slides, for instance, and you have all the basic methods are described there.